Hello everyone, welcome to part four or five of Drone Field to Finish. In this video, we're going to be going through creating a surface in InfoWorks using Model Builder. So just to sum up the previous three videos in video one, we collected the data for recap photo, those photos, those ground control points, processed that mesh file in Point Cloud Recap Photo. In the second part of our series, we cleaned up the Point Cloud Recap Pro, so we deleted that extraneous unnecessary data. In part three, we created that surface in InfoWorks. We just created the surface from the point cloud data and exported that point cloud data out. So what we did there is we created that surface in InfoWorks, exported out those ground grid points, and then exported out that vertical and linear data. This is a slightly alternative workflow you can use as well. So this is creating a surface model from the data created in Model Builder. And what this will do is we'll create a model using Model Builder. We'll import in the TIFF file just the imagery that you can use on the site. This is super helpful if you're trying to create a proposed conditions for your InfoWorks model. You can get some really accurate aerial photography based on them, based on that uh, drone flight we did. And you can also import in the RCP, point cloud data, create a surface from it, and blend that surface in InfoWorks. This is a lot like in Civil 3D when you paste surfaces together. And then you can export out that model from Civil 3D uh, excuse me, from InfoWorks, and then import that FBX file into Civil 3D. So let's move into InfoWorks. So this is what we did to create that model builder. And just for time sake purposes, we won't wait for that model to be created. I already have it created, but this is the process to create a model builder service. So we select model builder in InfoWorks, and model builder is really cool. It'll give you a nice, you, you can grab any place in the world and create a model of it. So, Milwaukee, Oregon, and I'm just going to turn on the aerial imagery, and let's see, this is our region right here that we've been sampling, uh, the intersection of Monroe and Southeast 37. So you just give your model a name, call it test, give a description if you want. Important to establish that coordinate system. Oops. Important to establish that coordinate system at the beginning because you can change it afterwards. So OR83NF, that coordinate system we've been using, and you just select a region of your model, or you can use the map extents. So something like this, and then you go ahead and create your model. And then you get an email afterwards saying your model's been completed, and you go back and import, and you can open it up. So going into this video file here, so this is the model builder, the, the model created for model builder. You can see we have some buildings in there. It does the best guess in terms of what's uh, building and what it looks like. It's not going to be perfect, but it does a really good job in terms of the roads and gets the sidewalk. And you can see we have a little bit of imagery here that it brought in. But for the most part, you can see it's it's fairly accurate, but it's not as accurate as that TIFF file that we're going to bring in in a second. So manage, content, data sources. And we're going to bring in that TIFF file. So we're going to go to the raster option. And we're going to go back here, industrial corner, and industrial park. Okay, ortho image, open. Okay, so you can see we're in that configured status. We want to get to that imported state in order to see it. So we're going to go here. And TIFF files like that LL84 format. So we're going to leave that as is. And we're just going to leave this as is right now, too. And geolocation, we're going to close and refresh. And now you can see we have that TIFF file brought in. And you can see that that data is a lot more accurate in terms of that imagery. It's a lot, it's a lot better. Uh, it's a lot more, catches the eye a lot more. And so one thing you'll notice is we have that giant black spot. So what this imagery did is it pasted it in. And then where if there wasn't a spot, it just pasted in that black empty area. So what we want to do now is we want to blend it together with that existing topography, that existing imagery. So we're going to go to configure and raster, and you're going to see this color mask is empty. So you just select that ellipsis, and then you say OK again. And then you're going to get, get this hashtag with a few zeros following it. And we're just going to leave that as is. We're going to do close and refresh. And then you're going to see we have that aerial imagery blended in. So this is a great way for creating that model for proposals. If you want to create that, uh, create uh, an as-is conditions and model off of like 
what, where things are and what things are going to look like down the road, this is a great way to work with a proposed condition and then, then, then work with that. So one thing you can do is you can blend in that model builder point cloud surface. So point cloud, same process, you're going to attach that point cloud. Just for time purposes, so we're not waiting to generate that terrain, I'm just going to bounce over another model that I have already imported in that surface and then generate the terrain from it. So it's the same process as it's the same process as we did in previous in step three in terms of importing in the point cloud and then generating the terrain from it. Give this model a second to open up. Okay. And then you can see here that we have Bear with me for a second here. My reports is acting up a little bit. Here we go. Let me reopen the reports. Okay. All right. So back in InfoWorks, we're just going to open up that this model that I've already generated the surface terrain from it. And we're opening this model up here. So you can see I have that TIFF file imported in. And actually, excuse me, this is the point cloud file. So you can see this point cloud file. And what I've done is I've imported that point cloud, generated the surface terrain. And you can see that we have the point cloud surface data blended in with the model builder surface. So if we go here, one thing, engineering view, let me go click on this gear you can turn on the wireframe so we can see what our surface looks like. So you can see we have this wireframe in here. This wireframe is the entire surface from the point cloud right here. And one thing we can do is we can bounce to a different proposal. And I believe this one will show us the, ah, oh, this is gonna be the same thing. So you can see that we've created this, this uh, blended together the point cloud surface with the model builder surface. And one thing we can do is we can export this out into Civil 3D. So present share, export 3D model or export IMX, they both work fine. And what you can do is export this 3D model. And this comes across as an FBX. And in Civil 3D, I have imported in that 3D model from InfoWorks. So open InfoWorks model. And it's going to come across as that IMX format and IMX right there. And then you'll just say this and then open model and it'll bring it in. And one thing you can notice here is I just brought in the five control points just to verify the location of them. And you can select this surface and object viewer. I'm just going to show you the comparison of the detail between the model builder surface and the point cloud data. So this is the point cloud data that has been merged and merged in with that model builder surface, you'll see that we have a good amount of good amount more points from that point cloud surface. So, but from a practical standpoint, you're probably going to want to limit the amount of surface data you come in, because the less data you have in Civil 3D, the faster it's going to run, especially when you're designing new complex designs on it. So it's definitely better to go through that process in video three, just to create that blank model and import in that point cloud that way. But this is still another option if you want to, if you want to incorporate some model builder data into your, into your project. Or there's the other workflow of importing in that TIFF file, that aerial imagery, which gives you a good, which gives you a good image when for your designing and uh, using InfoWorks to create that those conceptual designs. Thank you.